Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about Cucumber, an integration testing framework written in Ruby that can be used with a variety of languages and frameworks. Um, this is a really useful tool and hopefully uh, you'll see why as we go here. I'm going to be doing this with a Rails app, but there's nothing keeping you from using Cucumber in just about any application. Uh, it's even been, been used to do actual on app or on device development with uh, iPhone as well as many other platforms. So we're going to start out by creating a little Rails project here. And I'm going to kind of run some generators here that will just prepare my Rails app to work with Cucumber and create a few files for me as well as underneath uh, the Cucumber layer, I'm going to be using RSpec for unit level testing, and I'm going to show you kind of how to do some of that as well. And I'm going to get rid of my test directory because um, unit tests, if you're using RSpec, are stored in the spec directory. Just do one other little thing here. Kind of prep the database, make sure it doesn't give us any errors here. Pull up our little trusty editor. And one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to create um, a feature file, which is um, the way you, uh, basically one of the main things you do in Cucumber is you create a file that describes what it is you're trying to implement. And you're going to do this before you actually implement any of the features in your application. You always want to kind of do what's called test-driven development. Write your tests first. These tests should fail. And then you write the feature that allows the test to pass. So that, And the idea here is that you're going to focus on just the things that need to work in the application and the shortest path to success rather than kind of adding all sorts of bells and whistles. And the other thing that you're kind of doing here is um, you're making sure that um, that you create a framework that will allow you to check whether the app is still functioning the way you thought it was or the way you thought it should be um, when you first develop things. And this becomes more and more useful as your app gets larger and larger. So the feature file describes kind of what it is you want to do. So I'm going to create a feature called manage users dot feature and it goes inside your features directory which is created by our cucumber generator there and we'll just uh, as you can see uh, each feature kind of starts in the format of a user story which has a business purpose and a role that's doing this thing and also what it exactly it is what exactly it is that this um, person wants to do. And this is kind of a way of tying your feature to some some real useful reason for doing it. So usually you want to kind of keep asking why it is that you want to do something until you can come down to a basic answer like increase revenue, uh, make customers more, make customers happier, things like that. So I'm going to say that in order to understand my user base better, as an administrator, I want to view a list of users. And another thing you do in your Cucumber files, you create scenarios, which are kind of little things that need to happen in order for this user story to actually be considered a success, to have been to be considered that it was implemented and it was delivered as expected. And this is sometimes called the acceptance criteria. So we're going to create a scenario, and you can have as many as you want. And let's say I have some users in my database named George, and let's call it Mary. When I go to the list of users, then I should see 
George. And I should see Mary. All right, so um, as you can see, it's very plain English. And really the next thing that we want to do is now go and actually execute this feature. And that might sound weird to you, but um, Cucumber actually makes these features executable. So here's what we're going to do here. We're going to just type Cucumber from the command line in our features directory. And we're going to type the name of the feature we want to run and just see what happens. Now obviously we wouldn't expect much to happen because we haven't actually written any part of the application yet. But you can see that Cucumber actually drives you each step of the way um, by telling you what you need to do next, what part you need to write next, what you need to implement next. And it uh, has gone through my scenario and on the first step here it got stuck because it didn't know what to do for that step. This step hasn't actually been implemented yet. So what I'm going to do is actually take this code that Cucumber has even shown me that I need to implement and I'm going to copy it um, to a new file that I'm going to create in the step definitions directory and we'll call this file user steps dot rb so this is going to be um, steps related to users so one of the first things we're going to do in this file is that we're going to make it so it's a little bit more generic so this step can be reused in a lot of different um, situations so we're going to create a regular expression for matching the names of the people that uh, we want to find in, the, in our database. So um, whenever you create a grouped um, matcher inside your regular expression, those parentheses, that means that, the, that Cucumber will expect an argument or will pass an argument into this block. So we're going to call this the names of the people. And we're just going to take that thing and split it up. and split it by comma and go through each of those names and we will create a user for each of those names and we'll just you know assign its one feature which is its name and at this point I can go back to my cucumber feature and try to run it again and see what it is that it wants me to do next. So I've given it this step. Let's see what it what it can do now. And it looks like we had a problem in our regular expression. Let's take a look at that. Oh, I did it backwards. There we go. Let's try that again. So the next thing it's saying is that there's an uninitialized constant user error. And that's because we haven't actually created the user model yet. So um, the next step then will be to create that model. So let's do that. RSpec, we'll use a RSpec uh, generator here. Create a model called user and we'll just give it a single attribute called name. That's a string. And it went ahead and did that for us. And we're going to run the migration that it created as well. Copy that to our test database. And so the next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to actually get down to the unit level testing. So, so far we've just done integration level testing with Cucumber, but to keep things test first so that we're writing our tests before implementing our code, um, we're going to write uh, a couple of unit tests for the user. So let's go back to our editor and we'll pull up user spec. And our spec's just giving us kind of like a basic um, framework here, but we're going to take it and make it a little bit more custom. 
So one of the things we will do probably here is let's say that I don't know what what should we say it should enforce the uniqueness of users names so we'll create a new user And we want this new user to have a, an error when it tries to get created because it has the same name as a user that already is there. So what we're going to do up here is we're going to create an existing user before that thing, that test gets run. And we'll get rid of this uh, nonsense spec there. And um, so at this point in time, we can, from our command line, we can run rake spec, and that will run all of our specs that we've written. Tell us whether they're passing or not. And so it tells us that the spec failed. The The only one we've written has failed because um, it expected that the user was wouldn't be valid, but it actually was valid. Um, and that's because we actually haven't implemented this feature yet. So that's kind of what we expect. There's a few other ways you can do this. You can run spec and just the spec that you're interested in. So you can run just user spec if you want to. That's a little bit faster than running rake spec and it also lets you focus on just the thing you're working on. And if you're using TextMate, you can also actually, um, if you've got the right um, bundle installed, the RSpec bundle, you can get this kind of handy little um, display that, get, that tells you more detail and kind of is a little bit prettier. So let's go and fix this by um, pulling up the user and adding this feature. So we're validating the uniqueness of name. Let's go back and run our spec one more time and see what happens. So now that we're actually enforcing the uniqueness of users' names, um, we see that that spec that we just wrote passed. So as you can see, we wrote our spec first, and then we actually um, implemented the feature and uh, made it pass. So now that we've done that, let's go back to our Cucumber feature and see what's next to implement. Each step of the way, we want to go back and run it and see what it tells us it needs to do next. So... Um, the next thing it tells us is that on this step, when I go to the list of users, it doesn't actually know what the list of users is. So let's go to um, inside our support file here. We'll call it path. We'll go to the paths file. And we'll tell it um, a few other places that it should probably know about. So now we've told it how to take that location called the list of users and map it to an actual URI in our Rails app. So um, let's go back and run that feature and see what we need to do next after that. So now it says that there's not actually a route in our app for that uh, URL, which is true. Let's go and fix that. We've added that route. Let's uh, see what Cucumber tells us to do next.
Now it says that there is no user's controller. So let's go do that. The way we'll do that is we'll just use um, an RSpec generator again. And we're going to write the spec for this user's controller first. We're going to do a few things here. So, actually, I'll do a little shortcut here. So basically, it should um, map a certain kind of request, a request for the index of um, the user's controller to um, slash users. And uh, we're going to just check that there's a route for that. and that it's equal to that. We'll write a few more specs here. Do a little nested thing for a certain, a few different features related to, oops, the user's path. Put all these together. So, one of the first things we want to do is mock the user model because we kind of want to test just the controller in isolation and not any of the underlying stuff that is not related to this controller. So make sure that um, whenever we call find on the user model, we always get back that one array with that user that we've mocked. This is just kind of a, this thing I'm doing here is just kind of a way of making our specs make a little more sense. First thing we're gonna test for is that uh, the response that we get back should be success. Mm, let's also test that uh, it should render the template we, we want it to. So we're going to do the get request again and check that it renders the template index. And any step of the game, we can run these. Let's do that. Let's do that for some of these that we've already done. So all of these actually are working already because some of that stuff was already built into the generator and it just came with, comes with Rails, for example, the fact that, you know, the index um, gets delivered up by default and um, it gives you a good success error, a success error code of 200. So the next thing we should check is that it should find all users. Oops, I guess I wrote two of those, sorry. And what we're going to do here is expect that when we call find on the user, with all to find all users that it should return an array with just that one user that's in our database. 
We'll run this. And this one fails, and it fails for a good reason. It fails because we actually haven't written any of the um, the index um, action yet, so uh, it's not doing anything, and it's not obviously finding any users for that reason. Let's just write a couple more specs here. Maybe just one more. This is just checking to see that when it does get some users, it um, assigns them to a local variable that can be, or an instance variable that can be used to populate the the view with, to show up in the view. So let's check one more time how many specs are passing and how many are failing. So we see that those last two specs that we wrote are failing. Let's go make them succeed. We'll go into our controller and we'll create the index method. And we will find all users and assign that. Let's see what happens now. Oops, um, let me see what I did wrong here. Oh, sorry. I don't know what I was thinking there. So now we see that it is actually finding all the users and it's assigning them to the something that could be used in the view. You notice we're not checking the actual view um, and that's because all that this spec is supposed to do is test the controller. So um, we need to um, check for the view in another place. And um, I think that it's good enough to just test that certain view um, results uh, come back as you expect them in your actual Cucumber feature. So kind of the next thing we're going to do is go back to the Cucumber feature or actually go back to running the Cucumber feature and see what it's telling us needs to be done next. So it actually doesn't find a template because we haven't created a view yet. So let's go and do that. So we're going to put that inside our views directory. And we'll just call it index dot HTML dot ERV. And we'll make it really simple here. We'll take that variable that we've already instantiated in the controller in the action. probably should learn more of my TextMate shortcuts here, but uh, hopefully it's not dragging on too much. And we'll just display the user's name and a little BR tag just for fun. All right, so now our view is actually displaying the user's names, which is part of what the Cucumber feature said it was supposed to do. So we'll go see what happens now. And voila, we see that all four steps are actually passing now. And that's because the first step saved those users to the database. So given that those users exist in the database, when you go to the page that has a list of users, you should see those two names. This is a very simple cucumber step or cucumber feature. But it gives you an idea of kind of how you drive the process, sort of 
starting at the top level feature as it's supposed to work, describing some scenarios that should work for that feature to have been considered implemented, and then going down each step of the way, making sure that uh, the corresponding data models and controllers and views um, do the things that they're supposed to. So I hope you've enjoyed this today. And this is just a, a basic introduction to Cucumber. There's a lot of other features that uh, I hope to show you guys in another screencast later. But hopefully this has been interesting and useful to see kind of how you drive the process all the way down. So thanks for joining me.